Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Well, Brandon Rios delivered yesterday more beer for us. But more importantly, Brandon Rios went into this fight in Mike Alvarado's backyard in Denver believing that this was a career-making or career-breaking fight for him. Right? He had lost to Manny Pacquiao. He had lost to Mike Alvarado. Rios even talked about the possibility of walking away from the sport. Right? In his eyes, it was all on the line yesterday. All of it. Now the challenge he faced was he lost the rematch to Alvarado by having Alvarado use lateral movement on him. Right? Alvarado is sticking and moving in that second fight. He turns Rios, right? Rios is pursuing him around the ring, and Alvarado somehow is getting around the ring. Right? So the challenge for Rios was he had to find a way to cut off the ring and to move fast enough to actually catch up with Mike Alvarado. Then he had to find a way to keep Alvarado in the pocket, right? And to, you know, literally force Alvarado to fight him. Well, yesterday, Brandon Rios did just that. And the fight was so good. Rios was so much on the top of his game. That simply put, it has me rethinking the entire division. This is the best performance I've seen by a fighter in a while. Let me just say, the only thing better than Brandon Rios at the start of the second round right it's really good stuff the only thing better than Rios at the start of the second round before he gets hit with a low blow right that drops him it's a low blow there's no question about it the only thing better than Rios at the start of the second round is Brandon Rios for the entire third round right Rios is on the move right Alvarado tries to back away early, right? He's, he's trying to back up a little bit. Rios is coming forward. Rios is cutting off the ring. When Alvarado tries to go to Alvarado's right, to Rios's left, Rios has a nice left hook that he throws to keep Alvarado inside the pocket, right? But what makes Rios's work exceptional is the fact that Rios is accurate and high volume while throwing complex combinations. In other words, Alvarado starts to move out this way. Rios comes in with the left hook, right? Rios doesn't stop punching. Rios is moving forward. Rios is throwing other punches. Right? Rios gets close to Alvarado to the point where he's throwing uppercuts with both hands. Right? They're landing. Understand, Alvarado does try to get away. He doesn't want to be a sitting duck. Brandon Rios is mobile. He gets up close. The punches are short. The punches are varied. The punches are accurate. Let me point out that Rios knows how to fight inside. If you want to see a guy fight inside, 
in an A-plus manner, in a fight where he understands he has to be fluid, he has to fight at a faster pace, and yet the guy is able to land short punches with both hands and literally in the middle of a combination, he'll hit Alvarado with a bomb shot. You'll see Alvarado's head snap back. And what's impressive is Brandon Rios keeps throwing punches. But there's a moment in this fight where Brandon Rios even does better than that. Understand Alvarado tries to come forward. And Brandon Rios, after doing great work inside, and I mean great work, short punches, heavy volume of punches, Brandon Rios is able to back away, right? As Alvarado tries to come forward, Rios skillfully doesn't stay up close, right? Rios actually backs away a bit, allows Alvarado to miss, and then comes in. A lot of boxing is stuff that you really can't quantify. It's timing, right? It's knowing when to throw punches. It's knowing when to take a step forward, right? We don't have a category called times, right? I'm just here to tell you that if you look at the flow of the fight, you're going to see that Brandon Rios' timing is top shelf. This is a great performance. I'm not sure if Brandon Rios on any other day of his life beats the version of Brandon Rios who hopped in the ring yesterday. It's spectacular stuff. Let me point out the second round shortly before the KO, excuse me, shortly before the low blow knockdown right you see Brandon Rios in all of his glory Alvarado actually grabs one of Brandon's arms like great inside fighters Brandon Rios continues to throw punches with his other hand right then it's interesting understand what gets Rios dropped on the low blow as Alvarado moves away Rios is pursuing him. In other words, that's the fight Rios fights. He's filling in the gaps. The other guy retreats. Brandon Rios retreats with him. And while he's moving forward, he's able to throw punches in bunches. He's able to set things up. He's not stopping moving his hands. Right? So, Rios gets hit with a horrific low blow. Let me tell you, I have no idea how he continued the fight. Right, he hits the canvas, he's in clear pain. Now understand, this is a dirty move by Alvarado who tries to play it off to the crowd like he landed something legal. Right, Jay Nady, the referee, let's give some loves to the ref does a great job in immediately recognizing that it was a low blow. But understand, Rios is hurt. He's on the canvas. Understand, this is an Alvarado crowd. They're fighting in Denver, right? Somehow, Rios gets off the canvas. When the referee allows them to continue fighting, I thought, oh, this is a mistake by Brandon Rios. He should have taken more time. He should have recovered. Let me just tell you, Rios then proceeds to go right back into the trenches. Then proceeds to continue the great fight that he's having. Right? Then, of course, you get to the third round. The third round really should be called How to Fight Inside. Right? How to get revenge on a guy who won the rematch by moving. Let's just say this to me is a five-star performance.
right? Rios even seems to be thinking about moving his upper body and hiding his upper body, right? That's not really his game. He's a guy who comes in, tries to turn up the room temperature, you know, is willing to be hit as long as he's able to land his shots. Just understand that Rios now on the inside is doing even more than that. And let me just point out that Rios's punch selection is major. When he knocks down Alvarado, it's off a picture-perfect uppercut. Picture-perfect uppercut. Right, you're going to notice Alvarado's head snap back a few times in this one. Right, understand Alvarado, when he gets off the canvas, the world has changed for him. He makes it through the round, but it's clear that that uppercut did a lot of damage. Right, understand too that Rios is not the kind of guy who stands around admiring his work. In other words, if you're fighting Brandon Rios and you get hit with bombs, right, you get hit with bombs, right, you cannot assume that that's the last punch of the Rios combination. Let me close in saying this. You know, I understand that boxing has several great trainers. I understand that if he's breathing... Freddie Roach is going to win trainer of the year from the powers that be. That's just the power structure in boxing these days. I want you to look at this fight. I want you to see Rios' level of preparation. Rios' accuracy. The fact that Rios has it all working. Body shots, uppercuts, the left hook, which is important, right? Because it's keeping Mike close. The fact that he's able to literally move with Alvarado, right? He's, he's not discouraged that Alvarado is trying to move laterally, right? He's moving with Alvarado, right? He has the mental focus to get off the canvas, and he's still prepared. Nothing faces him, right? Understand, one of the big secrets to Brandon Rios' success, and let me point out, that mental focus was obvious in the Diego Chavez fight before this one. But Rios's corner, his trainer, Robert Garcia. You, the fight fan, when you're looking at a fight like this, you need to look at the corner, and you need to realize that, wow, this is a great corner. You know, wow, these guys are here on the road against a guy who beat them. And they're getting it done. They're ready. Right? Rio seems to be getting better and better. Right? I thought the level of aggression was really, you know, high level. And more importantly, you know, I made a video here yesterday on James Kirkland. When James Kirkland gets inside, you know, I don't really see great boxing skills. I see a lot of aggression. I don't really see great boxing skills. Here... Brandon Rios gets inside, and it's an eye-opener. Now, don't get me wrong, right? Rios, of course, could move around the pocket a little bit more. He could, you know, hide his upper body a little bit more, right? Life's not perfect. But let's just say, to be able to hit an opponent with the assortment of punches, hard, short punches that Brandon Rios is able to get off in this fight, to do it as accurately as Brandon Rios does it in this fight, with the mental focus that Rios has in this fight, all of that is special, right? This is not the Brandon Rios who fought Richard Abril. This is a different guy. This is not the Brandon Rios who fought Manny Pacquiao, right? Brandon literally has gone from thinking about retirement to putting himself in a position where really, you know, he has to be part of any tournament to crown the next champion. 
A plus performance. I understand at the very end of rounds, Rios gets hit with some shots. You could tell there's some dynamic, some personal dynamic between Rios and his opponent. I got the feeling Rios drops his hands a bit to kind of let off a ride or no, yeah, that's right. I'm here in your town and I'm bringing it. Right? But let's just say this performance exceeded my expectations. And I had picked Rios to win this fight. A plus. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Let me just say, too, when a guy is able to hit on the move like this moving forward, it's a predominantly front foot game from a fighter who is mentally tough, very tough is very determined and is moving better than he did in let's say the Alvarado rematch that's a tough combination to beat let me hear from you it'd be fascinating to see Rios a guy who is great inside right who's willing to move to get inside against someone like let's say an Adrian Broner who is great defensively inside and who, you know, how do you put it, um, has a problem with, you know, unorthodox fighters like a Marcus Maidana, but who hasn't looked to have a problem with more orthodox fighters, right? That's a fascinating fight, folks, right? Let's hope we get the pleasure of seeing that one. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.